Yes, it is the same day that I filmed the task A prompt interpretation video. And yes, I did just go to change my shirt so it looks like it's a different day. And yes, I did just give myself away. So that was pointless. Hello guys! <laughs> if you haven't watched the Task A video version of this that I released on Wednesday, make sure you go and watch it because it kind of explains what this series is going to be and give you an overall vibe, an overall feeling of what we're going to be doing today, which is interpreting some Task B prompts. This is the first video in the series of my Task B write a Task B essay with me uh, after the success of my other write and edit an essay with me <laughs> that you guys seem to love so yeah if you haven't seen that one click here other than come that on, let's write a task b essay come on come on come on come on Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate Robson and I scored 80 in section 2 of the GAMSAT in the 2021 March sitting. It put me in the top 0.7% so I feel like that gives me some sort of warrant to be giving advice about section 2. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. The GAMSAT's a bit of a sucker but I feel like if we can work together to make it easier for each other then... Why not? <laughs> we love a sense of community. If you are new here as well, I've got a couple things going at the moment. I have a Facebook group where you can kind of chat with like-minded people who are preparing for the GAMSAT and post your essays and seek feedback. I'm running an online course, which is probably the most exciting thing in which I do this, but in greater detail. And I tell you exactly what you need to do. All the theory behind it, I show you exemplars on how to actually write 80 scoring task A and B essays for the GAMSAT, which is like everything I know put into one course, the course that I wish I had <laughs> when I was preparing for the GAMSAT in March. Um, if you are interested in doing that, click the link in the video description and enroll now in the course. It's going to be awesome. It's going to tell you everything that you need to do to score 80 so that by the time you get into that exam room, you're going to be able to do it. No questions asked. Actually, you'll probably be able to score even higher than I did because I've learned so much since I scored 80. The last thing I've also got running is an email newsletter in which every week I kind of I, I include a research recommendation, which is something that I think would make a good example in a GAMSAT essay, like the Industrial Revolution, neoliberalism, li liberalism, communism, capitalism, historical events, society events, everything that I think will help grow your knowledge for section two, which is also something that I wish I kind of developed during my preparation. And I'm basically just doing it for you guys and <laughs> doing it for both of us to yeah, learn about that information, summarize it, and then give it to you guys to interpret yourself. But yeah, I don't want to rant on too much anymore. So let's get into the video. Today we are going to write a task B essay. Well, not going to write one yet, but we're going to interpret the prompts that I've selected. Like I said in my last video, I've taken these from Fraser's GAMSAT prompt generator. Um, they're kind of supposed to mimic the ones that were in a past GAMSAT. And yeah, I just use them because they're like the closest thing to Aces ones and I can't use Aces because copyright reasons. These are the prompts we're going to be working with today and we're basically going to be interpreting them and planning the essay that I'm going to write over the next few weeks and that I'm going to film for you guys. So let's get stuck into it. <laughs> um, okay, so the first one we've got, and I'll just read through them like I did in the last one. We've got beauty is power, a smile is its, is its sword. That's cute. <laughs> I already like task B so much better, as per usual. Um, number two, it is amazing how complete it is the delusion that beauty is goodness. Um, okay. Yeah, I can vibe with that. <laughs> the third one is that when I admire the wonders of a sunset or the beauty of the moon, my soul expands in the worship of the creator. That's pretty spiritual. Okay. So I'm starting to get an idea of like what it actually is hinting at. It's kind of about like spirituality, the spirituality of beauty, the power of beauty, the goodness, the morality of beauty, the power. Yeah. The last one is beauty is when you can appreciate yourself. When you love yourself, that's when you're the most beautiful. Self-love. Cute. <laughs> um, okay. So once I've read them through, I rewrite them in my own words. Same thing as I did in the last one. 
So the first one I've got is um, beauty is power, a smile is its sword. Okay, so like a smile is the weapon to beauty. Um, a smile is the weapon of the power that is beauty. So beauty is the power and we use smiles as the weapons. Okay, it's kind of like dangerous. Like it's kind of like looking at beauty as like a not necessarily a good thing because a sword implies like a weapon, which is usually has kind of like negative connotations to it. At least I think so. It could be also like powerful. Um, but to me, a sword is like quite violent. Um, so that's how I interpret it. I'm saying that like um, beauty, so like smiles. Oh, it's also saying like beauty is the concept, but smiles are the the so beauty is the abstract concept but smiles are the smiles are the concrete weapons smiles are the concrete mm, manifestations okay yeah like the real manifestations of the concept of beauty um like, and it also has negative connotations. I think that's important. Of smiles as swords and beauty as maybe like a dangerous power or like a forceful power. Okay, the second one. It is amazing how complete is the delusion that beauty is goodness. How complete is the delusion? Okay, so we think that we think like wholeheartedly or we are convinced wholeheartedly oh, what am i even writing okay convinced wholeheartedly that beauty is good and goodness like kind of has like moral connotations to it um so i'll just put moral there like beauty is right maybe whereas like ugliness is wrong like non-beauty is wrong number three when i admire the wonders of a sunset or the beauty of the moon my soul expands in the worship of the creator okay very spiritual um it's kind of like the beauty of nature and the power the power of nature um the wonder of nature so it's also about like the power it's all about the power of beauty yeah, gonna keep that in my mind. <laughs> and then the last one is beauty is when you can appreciate. Maybe I'll just write that down, actually, seeing as I have a terrible memory. Um, yeah, okay. The last one, beauty is when you can appreciate yourself. When you love yourself, that's when. Okay, so beauty is self-love. Cool. Okay, so now I go back through them and I kind of like summarize them into one theme. The theme that I think they're trying to get at, which is... Last time it was the power of technology. This time it's the power of beauty. Yeah, the first one's all about power. The second is all about like the morality. Um, that like we're convinced of that beauty is is good. Whereas like, but that's also saying about the power of beauty like beauty is a concept you know it's not like it's an abstract concept it's not something that we can like hold it's subjective as well so saying that it's like inherently moral or inherently good is like yeah already it's like trying to assign some objective meaning to something that is subjective that doesn't really make sense um and maybe it's like the power of beauty that convinces us that beauty is Beauty is inherent or inherently good, whereas it's actually subjective. Um, maybe that could be something interesting to write about. Subjective, subjectivity of beauty. Of beauty. Um, convincing us that that is not how you spell convincing. Beauty is inherently good versus like ugliness. Well, let's use non-beauty perhaps that's nicer non-beauty as being bad or evil 
Okay, then the last one, um, like the power of nature, the wonder of nature. So that's kind of talking about something different to the last one as well, because the last one is implying that beauty is in the individual. Um, it's very ind individualistic, quite selfish, quite self-absorbed or like introspective rather than the third one is like looking out a lot, which I kind of like more. Um, but there's also value to it. Like is beauty in the outside world or is it in, in us? Or are we part of the outside world? What's the difference between the beauty inside of us and the beauty outside of us? Okay, I've got some ideas, <laughs> who knows where this is going to go, but okay, I summarized it into a theme. I've kind of took some stuff out of it. Um, subjectivity of beauty, like the power of beauty. Um, yeah, I think in convincing us, using it as a weapon, which implies that it has some ability to like implement change. Um, okay, then um, beauty inside world versus outside. Okay, now my approach to task B is kind of different to task A because of like the structure that I use. If you don't know the structure I use, go check out my um, task B video, which I'll just link you. Um, but I use a reflective style pretty much. And I go into it more in my course in a lot of detail. <laughs> so if you want to know actually how to write a reflective style essay, then sign up for the course. Um, but the way that I do it is I kind of first think of like a thesis, something I want to say, my idea, the opinion that I have about this. And then I can't try and come up with a memory from my own life um, that ties it to that. Okay. And then I can like write that next paragraph about how it relates to wider society. So this is going to be a deep one because it's talking about beauty. <laughs> and I'm already starting to think about my relationship with beauty and how that's changed over the years, which would make for an interesting reflective kind of style. Um, looking at how I perceive beauty in the world. Um, oh yeah, once again, I haven't mentioned it in this video, but like, this might not be good. <laughs> this is just coming from me and it's the best that I can do. Um, and if you disagree with the stuff that I write, that's great. That's totally fine because then you can go and write your own essays and have your own opinions. And that's like the point of it, you know, our unique perspectives on these matters are what matters. <laughs> So, yeah, totally fine if you don't like this. I'm just kind of like showing you my process uh, and yeah, <laughs> yep. Okay, so what do I want to say about this? I kind of want to say that maybe I'll go back into it and see which one I want to talk about the most. And I kind of like the whole idea of the subjectivity of beauty one. It is amazing how complete is the delusion that beauty is goodness. I like that one, but I also like when I admire the wonders of a sunset or the beauty of the moon, my soul expands in the worship of the creator, which is like um, about wonder and awe and how a connection with nature is kind of like a light that, 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 yeah, that wonder in you that is like no other. I, re I read a book, great book, Phosphorescence by Julia Baird, who's this Australian journalist last year in lockdown about like the wa the wonder and the awe that we find when we're in beautiful places in nature and i just like feel like that would be an interesting thing to write an essay about i could basically write her book except in the form of an essay actually that's not a bad idea <laughs> um okay so either i'm going to write about um beauty being the subjectivity of beauty or beauty and power of nature okay maybe I'll ask myself what I think about this first do I think that beauty is subjective and that it convinces us that it's good like do we believe that beauty is good is inherently good or moral yes I think so why because um, well, first of all, like the media kind of convinces us of that, but also we appreciate beautiful things as human beings. We always have art, um, color, 
wander ties into the whole nature thing um and we inherently deem that which is beautiful that which we see as beautiful as good i think we're attracted to it um and what we find not beautiful whether it's people whether it's places we kind of find them as bad or inherently not not good or immoral that's also not necessarily true though um okay the second thing is about the beauty and power of nature and i'm already kind of like wanting to write my essay on that more now because i could talk about how like the power of spending time in nature and finding the beauty in that in connecting us with again like the essence of what it is to be human to feel to see whereas like life in the city which is something that i also made a video about <laughs> recently um can disconnect us with that feeling of like authenticity of what it means to be human um and our lives like so engrossed in technology as i am right now <laughs> um disconnect us from that so this is a problem because I have two ideas <laughs> that I could write an essay on. Okay, I'm just going to pick one. I think it's going to be the second one about the power of nature because I feel a little bit more strongly about it. I think I'm going to plan my essay now. Um, actually, I'll plan my thesis first. So my thesis is kind of or like my underlying point, the point of the whole essay, which you still need in reflective style essays because it still just gives the reader a point of like, or well, they understand it like guides them through your essay into like what the point of your essay is um so my thesis is going to be that um it's in the power of nature um in nature is the, the most powerful shared beauty that we can experience as human beings and it lights a sense of wonder in fact maybe nature is the only objective beautiful thing like we all find skies beautiful or a lot of us do I don't think I've ever met anyone that doesn't find skies beautiful maybe if you do comment below <laughs> um or like a mountain range we all find because that's intrinsically human i think to find nature beautiful that's a good point i think so it's not that nature is the most powerful shared beauty yeah okay nature is the most powerful shared most powerful shared objective beauty that we can experience and it lights a sense of wonder and awe in us that connects us to each other and to our world that man-made <laughs> objects do not okay that's a, that's a fine thesis I'm ha I have an opinion on it that it's the most powerful shared objective beauty that we have, we can experience as humans. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, beauty can also be love. Um, but it's a different kind of beauty. That's like connection. That's social connection and social satisfaction, I think. Um, whereas beauty and the power that, that beauty is and has on us, the effect that that has on us, in terms of our connection, our spiritual connection to the world, I would say that nature is the only thing that does that. Yeah. And like standing in nature and seeing it and experiencing it. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna find an anecdote now, which I can like this story I can tell to convince people of that point, which is the first paragraph that I use in my task B style, um, and probably it's going to be one where I am in nature, 
Um, so what's an experience that I've had in nature <clears throat> that we were all in which we were all convinced that it was beautiful? I mean, like, I remember when I was overseas, when I was in Albania, no, Montenegro, and we climbed at sunset onto the top of these old ruins and we looked over the sky as the sun was rising over the city and over these old ruins and the mountains that we all just like stopped and shared that moment. That was cool. Now I'm thinking about like musical experiences also can be quite like transcending, transcendental, um, objectively beautiful, but also music is subjective. So maybe that's not true. Um, nature, nature, <laughs> nature. Let's just go with that time when I was overseas. Why not? Okay. Yeah, because it also I can touch on like how we, the friends that I went with, we had like different social relationships that I think kind of like that maybe social friendship issues that we were experiencing kind of went away as we stepped into nature and stepped outside of ourselves and looked around. That could be a good point because that's how it's shared as well. Okay, so and notice how I'm just like going with the first ideas that come to my head with this. Like you don't have really time to question it. Yes, this video is taking a while, but in your actual plan, you only have five minutes to do this. So like I often just go with the, the first and the best idea that I have just because you don't have much time to change it. Um, okay, I think we were in Montenegro. Um, looking at the sunrise, sharing the experience, um, washing away our worries, the physical pains in our bodies, and our individual and shared issues to connect with something greater, a sense of awe and wonder, the power ignited, the power ignited by the beauty of nature and something bigger than us. Okay, so I've got my anecdote, I've got my thesis. The reflective paragraph is going to be about um, how that changed me, how that influenced me. Um, about how I reacted now, how the other people felt, tips for showing empathy. So I'm going to talk about how um, it influenced my desire to travel, um, to see different places, um, to connect with bigger things outside of my <laughs> small life in the city. Um, nature can be healing. Um, it's now my like, my go-to source of healing. When I feel trapped in the city, I like to go for hikes, whatever. Um, And I'll talk about how I'm empathizing with how other people feel. So like, I think my friends felt it too, a connection between us. Although maybe they were feeling something different. Also, I think my perception of this memory has changed with my um, over time as memories do, but it still holds a powerful place in my heart equals power of nature, of nature. Okay, then in my next paragraph, which is my relation to wider society paragraph, again, if you don't understand this structure, go and watch that task B video that I put out ages ago. Um, I'm still using the same structure. I've just kind of adapted it a bit. Um, relation to wider society, I'm talking about um, the power of in connecting us. It's basically like my thesis. Um, objective beauty that we can share 
My example is definitely going to be that book by Julia Baird. Um, or like tour guides to ancient ruins, beautiful locations. Why do people climb Everest for achievements and connections to places they have not experienced before? We are all after experiences and nature often offers these to us. New ones. Like the size of the world is so big. <laughs> that there are seemingly <laughs> endless experiences. Okay, cool. Then my conclusion will basically just be like, we need to get out in nature more. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think that's my plan. I think I can write an essay about that now. Like I said, coming up with a task for essay is a lot easier for me once I actually do have my idea, just because I like writing reflectively and I like tying lessons that I've learned about life to my own experiences because often ideas that I have about the world are influenced by the experiences I've had by them. So having this like reflective style really allows me to figure out where those ideas came from which also like is satisfying to me, but also easier to write about. Yeah, cool. So that's it. That's my plan. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped you understand how I kind of approach prompt analysis and planning, which is one of the most difficult bits coming up with ideas. The next videos next week are going to be me writing the actual introduction for both of the essays, task A and task B. So yeah, come along for the ride, come along for the process. And yeah, hopefully by the end of it, it's pretty clear how I write my essays. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and I'll see you for the next video very soon. So girls moving around. If you see your name go get the brother up down and just on. Come on, come on, just on. Breathe stop for real and give it what you got. Just on.